boys and girls, welcome to Everyday Math Lesson 7.1, Patterns in Counting. The materials that you'll need today, notebook paper, pencil, math journal, and your calculator. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is go over our math boxes from the previous lesson. So if you can open up your math journal to page 157. If you're noticing that you have any mistakes, please fix those with your pencil and eraser. So for the first question, use the digits 3, 1, and 5 to make the smallest number possible. And so you should have had 135. And then write the largest possible number. You should have had 531. In question number two, do these objects have at least one line of symmetry? So for the circle, you should have said yes. You would be able to find lots of lines of symmetry in a circle. For the second picture, you would have said no. You would not be able to cut this in half and have two equal sides. For question number three, there are 18 cans of juice and they're shared by five people. Draw a picture. So I have my 18 cans of juice and I divided those between my five people. I can see that each person is going to get three cans of juice, but then there's going to be three cans left over. For question four, there's four rows of chairs, how many chairs in all? So I made an array on the side with my four by four, and I can see that there's a total of 16 chairs. There's four rows, four chairs per row, so 16 in all. For question five, find the difference. So from 32 to 53, it would be 21. To go from 37 down to 19, my difference would be 18. And to go from 75 up to 93, my difference was 18. And it might be helpful to use a number grid for problems like number five. For question number six, which figure does not belong? Choose the best answer. You should have picked the empty circle. This is the one that does not belong. So double check to make sure you have your page correct before moving on to the next part of the lesson. Please use your notebook or a whiteboard and marker if available to write down your slides from the next, write down your answers from the next slide. If the speed is too fast, pause as often as needed. So for our first question, Michaela has seven packages of cupcakes. There are two cupcakes in each package. How many cupcakes in all? Press pause to solve and play to check. All right, second graders, so in solving this, I'm thinking 7 times 2 equals, and I know that 7 times 2 equals 14. Another way of thinking about that, I have two groups of 7, so I have 7 plus 7, which I know is 14. So my answer, I should have had 14 cupcakes. We'll try a couple more like that. Daniel has five sheets of stickers. There are eight stickers per sheet. How many stickers in all? Press pause and play when you're ready to check. All right, second graders. So I'm thinking about five times eight, and I know that five times eight equals 40. And for this problem, I chose to do a little skip counting. So I started at five and I counted by fives eight times until I ended at 40. So my answer was 40 stickers. We'll try one more problem like this. Each lollipop costs 10 cents. Curtis bought nine. How, how much did he pay? Press pause and play to check. All right, so for this one, I'm thinking about the number model 10 times nine, which I know that 10 times nine equals 90. And how I figured it out this time is I skip counted again. So I started at 10 and I kept counting up by 10 until I hit 90 or until I did that nine times. So we know that he had, he paid 90 cents. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna practice counting. So you don't need to write anything down for this, but if you wanna either count in your head or count out loud with me. So for the first one, we're gonna start at two and we're gonna stop at 20 and we're gonna count by twos. And I want you to see how I'm following my circle with this one. So here we go. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, and we'll stop. 
notice how once I had a number like 10, then my zero, that was my number in my ones place. So I was at 10 and then I was at 12. So that same number in the ones place, it's going to keep staying that way as I'm going. So if I was going further, then I would have 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Let's try another one. This time, we're going to count by fives. We'll start at five and we'll stop at 50. Here we go. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So again, you can see that my ones place is either a five or a zero whenever I'm counting by fives, when I'm starting at five or starting at zero. We'll try one more together. So this time we're gonna count by tens and I'm gonna be staying here. We'll stop at once we get to 100. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So when I'm counting by tens, my ones place is going to stay the same. It's going to stay at that zero. We'll practice a few more kind of like this, but now we're going to be using our calculator. So if you can pull out your calculator, and on your calculator, can you type in the number 22? And then will you hit plus three? I'm going to hit equals. And then I'm going to continue counting by hitting equals until I stop at 52. Are you ready? So one more time in case you missed that, I'm going to hit 22 plus, oops, let me clear that one more time. 22 plus, well, I better start fresh here. 22 plus 3 equals, here we go. So I have 25, 28. 31, 34, 37, 40, 43, 46, 49, and 52. Let's try another one like that. So this time we're going to count, we're going to put 22 in again, and we're going to count by fours, and we'll stop when we get to 62. So I'm going to type in 22 plus 4 equals. And I'm going to continue hitting equals, watching my calculator skip count for me. So I'm at 24, 30, 34, 38, 42, 46, 50, 54, 58, and 62. Let's try one more like that today. So this time we'll count from 80 and we'll count by sixes and we'll stop when we get to 140. So I'm going to type in 80 plus 6 and then I'm going to hit equals. 86, 92, 98, 104, 110, 116, 122, 128, 134, 140. All right. I'm just going to put this to the side for a moment, but I'm going to need my calculator again for our math journal page. So now we'll talk about page 161 and 162. Page 161 looks like this. And if you look at question one, it says use a calculator to count by fives, starting with the number 102, and then color the counts on the grid with a crayon, or you could circle it with your pencil. Then we're going to pay attention to see if we can notice a pattern. So if I start just the first part with you, so I would type in 102 plus 5 equals, and then I would need to circle that 107. I'd click equals again, and then I would circle 112. Can you keep going with question number one? Press pause and then play when you're ready to check. All right, second graders, so when you were finishing, so as you were, you kept going, so we had our 112, if I kept hitting equals, I had 117, 122, and then 127. 
Do you notice a pattern? Do you notice how our line, how our numbers are right in line? So when we were counting by fives, when we started at 102, our numbers were either ending in a two or in a seven. For the next question, you can either pick a number to count by, or if you want to use the same one that I'm going to use, I'm going to count by sixes, and I'm going to start with the number 304. So again, you can either use the same one that I have, or you could pick a different one. But I'll show you really quick how I'll do this. So I'm going to type in my calculator, 304. I'm going to click plus 6 equals. So then the first number that I would be circling would be 310. I would hit equals again. Then I would circle 316. Can you press pause, solve problem number 2, and then press play when you're ready to check? All right, second graders, so we will finish up with this page. So I was at my 304, 310, 316. As I keep hitting equals, you can see I had 322, 328, 334, 340, 346, 352, 358, 364, 370. So the pattern that I noticed for this one is I said the ones digits were always even numbers. So when I was counting by six, and since I started at an even number, I could see even numbers for all my ones digits. So you might have the same thing that I have for number two, or yours might look a little bit different if you chose a different number. But double check to make sure you have your page correct before moving on to math boxes. We'll talk about now page 162. So I'll quickly go over the directions, then I'll ask that you complete this page on your own. When you're all done, take a picture and add the picture to CSAF for your classroom teacher. We will go over this page in our next video. So for question number one, which one is certain to happen? A spaceship will land at school. Your favorite sports team will win every time. Spring will follow winter. You will be a movie star. So again, which one is certain to happen? For question two, you're solving, and then don't forget about your unit. For question three, make a seven by seven array with dots, and then tell me how many total dots. For question four, arrange the allowances, which is the amounts of money in order from the minimum or the smallest to the maximum, the largest. And then tell me which number is the minimum or the smallest, which number is the maximum or the largest. For question five, match each person with the correct weight. So think about a newborn baby, a second grader, and an adult. And then lastly, for number six, how many boxes are on this math box page? And then how many boxes are on half of this page? All right, I'll see you next time.